What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, B-Boy John25. So I'm going to do my AEW Dynamite review. I like to go to Hit that like button, hit that red button, and let's get started. Now, AEW Dynamite itself was just a decent show. It was just decent for what it was. So we're kicking off our first match. We got Adam Page in the Dark Order in the Dark versus the Hardy Party. This was a pretty good tag team match. Pretty good. So it says, Mark Quinn and Hangman starts, star, starts matters off. Major quickness and athleticism show Showing at at the start, the two talk talk trash to one another, and Matt gets tag in. Collar and elbow send Hangman into into Poppy Party's corner. Hard hard elbow by Page, but Hardy tags in for a triple triple team. But Dark Order join in Hangman, unusing with some boot big boots to send Hardy sailing. Um, they work on Isaiah for a two on two count after a slam. Dark Order do a triple. No, I'm sorry. Dark Order do a double hip toss, and then Hangman gets a standing moonsault for a near fall. It's show, it's down to Silver and Cassidy. Kick from John Johnny Boy. John chance in daily daily place. Tag to Quinn, and he takes out all his all his three adversaries. Pirate Party double team. Mathem, Mahatan drop on silver, followed by a wish, a wishbone, followed by a drop kick. Isaiah corner silver and Matt tag tags himself in. Involved inventive knee moonsault by Private Party. Quinn tags in Hardy, and Matt hammers away at silver in their corner. Matt seeks a side effect but turns it into a sleeper into a sleeper hole on silver. Several powers up and piles up with a side suplex. Matt goes for another side effect, but no dice. Modified neck drop by Hardy. Hardy sizes him him up, but John hits a big brain buster. JR mentions Killer Carl knock as Heyman gets the hot tag. And he and Isaiah work on one another, but Paige Larry's Quinn off the apron. He leaps on the top for Hardy to the outside. And then, and then hits a major lead Larry on Quinn for a very near fall. Tag to Hardy, who hits a side effect on Hangman. Two count. Matt goes for a twist of fate, but Hangman hits him hard with a clothesline. Tag to Reynolds, and he, he as he and Quinn go at it. Rolling back elbow, and then a spinning elbow for, spinning elbow followed by a standing suplex for for the almost win. But Isaiah comes comes to break it up. Dark Order double team the heck out of Quinn. Follow with with sit down sit down bomb by Hangman. John jackknifes for a near win. But Hardy pulls Silver off and hits him hard over the front. Hangman gets disposed of of and it allows Private Party to hit the gin and juice. Hardy tags himself in and Matt goes for the cover. One two three. The winner of the match, the Hardy part, the Hardy part. This this tag team match was pretty good. The backstage segment was funny. It, it's clear that Isaiah and Mark are not pleased with Hardy's action as Hangman looks on and frustrated. Alex Marvez congratulates MJF on his dinner. D. Bernard praise from the New York Times. Jericho knows that he was involved in it as well. MJF says he couldn't have done it without him. He seems a mentor, the goat and a friend. He considered all the inner circle the same as well. Thing kinda seemed hunky do dory but a little little tense. That that part that backstage segment was hilarious. That like MJF was just my I love MJF. And Chris Jericho is, is the best in the world. That's all I gotta say. But Chris Jericho is Looks like a baby face every time the fans sing that. Ju the, every time the the crowd sings that song, Chris Jericho's theme song. That's all I gotta say. But anyway, Cody and Brandy receive a gift on their doorstep, and here they reveal that they're having a baby in tw in 2021. So it's official. Cody and Brandy are having a baby in 2021. Congratulations to Cody and Brandy. That, that that's all I gotta say. So we get match card number two: Cody Rose versus Angelico. This was a um this was a decent match. It was just decent for what it was. It says the winner of the match, Cody Rhodes. Outcome team Taz. Taz pro 
for Charlie congratulates Cody on the win and the baby news. He's going to be a daddy. Stark says, Where is the, where's their daddies? Congrats as Team Taz made him and Darby their kids last week. Taz threatens to put Cody on on parenting leave. But Sting mutes the kids and he comes out with the with a bat. Hobbs has to be re, restrained by his comrades as the stingers as the stinger stares on. He and the nose bleeding Darby Allen stare stare down one another from afar as Sting walks off. I didn't even know Darby Allen Darby Allen was standing right there. Just like TM said. They better book Sting versus Darby Allen. Now I don't mind Sting versus Cody Wells. I'm looking forward to that match as well too. But give us Sting versus Darby Allen, or else TM says that he's done with AEW. I agree with him. I agree with him. So shouts to you, TM, for watching this video. Um, shouts to you for watching this video, and, and shouts to you for saying it. We see Miro backstage in a light in a light bright hoodie. Marvis no, notifies that th that AEW management is finding him seventy. Seventy-five thousand for his actions. As far as he concerned, Orange Cassidy owns him that money. Now it now it's the holidays. He's going to defeat Sunny Kiss on Dark this week, and then he got a big wedding day announcement for next Wednesday. Orange Cassidy's going to ruin that wedding. I already know. So anyway, I just have to put that out there. But what about the folks in the hospital? Ask my best, Bob Hum Humba. Eddie Kingston comes out and he doesn't care about anybody. He's here to address his enemies and he mentions the big guy up, upstairs. Eddie's still here about pa uh, Pac. He, he's no nursing his injuries. He ain't coming back. He's done. How about the big goofy bastard Lance Archer? Out oh, he comes charging, at Ar charging and Archer comes or something. Out comes the butcher in the, in the blade. Big time numbers game. Here comes the Lucha Bros. The numbers are even. Inside pack, they they clear House of the Kingdom family. Stereo, stereo kicks to Blade and Butcher and Lucha Bros. Archer soon gets the choke slam. Eddie kicks him, but hot, but Pack comes in and kicks Eddie hard. They argue over the rights to Kingston's height and his fam belts. Death Triangle and Archer stands tall. So we already know Pack career is not over. Dasha is is with Dustin Rose. Seven, seven, seven was a bad idea a year ago, and seven is it's bad idea now. He's not the third most important Rose, and he's calling Evil Uno out next week. This was a fire promo by Dustin Rose. I like this. I like this. Now match card number three: the best fan, best fans in the varsity blondes versus the inner circle. I like this. I like this match right here. This this match was fantastic. It says um, the winner of the match, the inner circle. They continue to attack after the match, but top flight clears the ring. MJF and Jericho are not pleased. Donna Rosa addressed Britt Breaker. She she's been wrestling all over the world, and it was Britt's fault. She lost her match against Serene Deb for the N NWA title. She tossed major trash, but Britt, as Reba interrupts this, allows Britt to attack Rose. Rebel pours water all over all over Thunder Rose's face as Britt has her locked jaw in. Locked in. Okay. Match card number four. SCU Frankie Kazarian and Chris Daniels versus the Acclaim. Now the Acclaim got this Thugonomics vibes like John Cena. That's all I gotta say. Um, this match this match was decent. Decent match for what it was. It says the winner of the match, the Acclaim. So they claim our next in line to challenge the Young Bucks for the AEW World Tag Team Champions. All right, enough for that. Post match, Mox Castor wraps away at Young Bucks at ringside. Bonden challenges the Young Bucks for the titles next week. Cast shows some frustration towards Daniels. So, so I guess the I guess we're getting the SCU um, breakup. So this might be a SCU breakup. That's all I gotta say. Oh yeah, but they did tease Darby Allen and Sting earlier tonight, so they did, so the AEW finesse finesse me and Tim about the tease about Sting and Darby Allen. I just want to put that out there. So we get Amberlees and Dan Monte versus Big Swole and Serena. This was a um 
this was pretty good as well. Pretty good. Pretty good. So it says the winner of the match, Serena Deb and Big Swole. So it says post match. Now Rose and Mickey Guerrero attack the winners, but Red Velvet become be, becomes the counterbalance with a steel chair. Best match reveal the with a stomp. Stomp Orange Cassidy as as they reveal that they are going to be the attendants for Miro and Kip's b big wedding day announcement. So they're already going to ruin that. The best friends in Orange Cassidy are going to ruin the wedding. So that's like I said earlier. But anyway, a highlight package gets shown of Jurassic Express, which promotes FTR to interrupt the commentary. Into a commentary, they do not like being cast aside in favors of a fake Tarzan and a man dressed as a dinosaur. So it tells the, the both to fear the re revelation. Now I like the um, Jurassic Express and FTR. So sign me up for Jurassic Express versus FTR. Sign me up to see that match. Then we get a the main event of the evening, no disqualification for the AEW World Championship Eliminator match. So it's Johnny Joey Janela with Sonny Kids versus Kenny Omega. This was a decent main event. This was decent. It says um. It says right here, it says, Joey tosses tosses a trash can at Omega as he walks down to the entryway. Um, Collis gets on the mic and implores Siobhan to leave the commentary so he can sub in, and Siobhan declines. Omega hits a famous sir on a chair. That was a good spot right there. Collis, Collis begins to commentate on a live, live mic instead. A top, a top swan time by Kenny. Oh, Omega hits a hits Janela with a disgusting cookie sheet. Kenny gets on the mic for some play by play. He continues to attack the bad boy. Why why is Kenny Omega speaking uh, speaking while doing the match? I don't I don't understand that part. But anyway, Kenny has the ref hold hold the mic as he gives gives a moonsault press to Jan, to Janela with a trash can kick out at two. Kenny is upset and says as much on the mic. He chops Janela with a slap. Consents trash talk as he continues to assault J Joey. A springboard double stump with a trash can on the back of, Janela's, of, of Janela. Omega sets him up for a one-winged angel, but Janela hits a reverse of her corona on Omega. Sonny Kiss pulls out a table, kiss Kiss sets it up by the stage and Janela punches at, at Kenny. He puts him on, up on the table. Janela climbs the turnbuckle and, and comes crashing down on Kenny through the table. Janela miss, miss a moonsault in the ring and Kenny hits a two V triggers and then one wing angel for the victory. The winner of the match is still your AEW World Champion, Kenny Omega. Post match, Pat comes out with his de death circle. Comrades, he asks Kenny to direct his attention to Ray Phoenix, who never lost in the tournament. Pac wants him to explain such a av avoidance to him. Don Cos says, "Wrestlers, do don't tell the AEW World Champion what to do." Pac reveals otherwise. December 30th, Kenny will defend that belt against Ray Phoenix. Ray Phoenix, Kenny ain't pleased as the show ends. Now I'm looking forward to um, Kenny Omega versus Ray Phoenix for AEW World Champion. All right, AEW itself was just a decent show. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed my AEW Dynamite review on highlights, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn on post notifications every time I upload a video. And tomorrow, I will see you guys on my WWE NXT review on highlights tomorrow. And I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great, great night and stay safe. And I'm out of here.